crazy cook in the park. All he wants is to be left alone. Yeah, that's what he says. I just want to be left alone. Must be nuts. He says he's happy. Just wants to be left alone. <laughs> Theater 5 presents John Hanson, Kermit. Did you enjoy the Hamlet? Oh, Ray, you're supposed to be relaxing, not thinking of your TV show. <laughs> You think this one evening of free Shakespeare in the park will do it? Oh, Ray, you didn't give it a chance. No. You know what I've been doing since Hamlet saw the ghost? I've been collecting faces, checking the audience for possibilities, casting their faces for could-bes on my TV show. Oh, Ray, all the time. All the time. People aren't people to me anymore. They're could-bes. Could be politicians, could be explorers, could be atomic scientists... Could be anything long enough to fool the audience and the dear guests on my TV panel of The Truth Will Out. It's automatic with me, like a facial tick. How am I supposed to relax from that? I know what I could be, if you'd let me. I could be married. Not now, Doris. Wait till the show gets settled. Wait till it hits the top of the TV ratings. Wait till my job is secure. Wait. Yes, Doris. Wait, huh? Doris, look, look, huh? over there. Look, walking alone, the tall, thin man with the long hair. You need a beatnik? I need a French artist, could be. Could that man there be an avant-garde artist? Sure. He has a nice, remote, starved quality. Wait here. Oh. Uh, you, sir. Uh, you, uh... I'd like to talk to you. It's worth your while. No, no, it's not. Please, let me alone. No, you don't understand. This is business. I do understand. No, no. No, no, hey, hey, don't run away. I want to... Don't... <laughs> Does, does anyone know who that man was? I'll pay ten dollars for any information. Hey, mister. What? Mister. What? Y you said you'd give ten dollars. We know the man who ran away. Who are we? Me and my friend Sanders. Here he comes. Find him, Sanders? Nah, he went home. Where's home? Where does he live? Where does your money live, mister? Let's see. What's the man's name first? What do you want with him? I want to put him on TV. I'm a TV producer. Here's my car. Yeah. That's my name, my address, and phone number. I want to help him win money and prizes. Hey, Santa's, he's for real. Yeah. TV. So what's the man's name? John. He's crazy. He lives in the park. He washes his clothes on the lake rocks sometimes. You ought to see that. He eats the food people leave around. People throw away a lot of stuff you can still eat. Come on now. No, it's true. John lives in this park. Lives here all the time. He eats, he sleeps. He's got a cave for cold weather, but he never goes out of the park. Hermit, on you. Hermit, he's crazy. Ah, oh, maybe a little bit. Usually he doesn't like people to see him or get up close to him. But he talks to us. You know, once he showed us how to make a fire without matches, he's got no matches, no nothing, only some books. Boys, if you can get in touch with this John the Hermit, tell him I'm a right guy, get him to see me, I'll pay you another five apiece. I'll buy the dime for the phone. Ah, oh, shut up, Santas. Mister, my name is Kip. You'll hear from me, maybe tonight. Come on, Santas. <sighs> Ray, what is this? Doris, they couldn't make up a lie like that. It must be true. Think of it. A hermit in a park... Surrounded by millions of people, living with stars and grass and trees in the world's most sophisticated city. Doris, you saw him. You heard You heard that sensational voice. Isn't this the gimmick to end all gimmicks? I could take him under my management. I could build our show around him once. And after that, it could go anywhere. Suppose he doesn't want to be on TV. The whole human race wants to be on TV. But he's a kook. Kooks want to most of all. Uh, do you think he was handsome, Doris? He had a certain something. He really did, Ray. Good. If you picked it up, the other gals will, too. Oh, sometimes I wonder if you're human. Sure I'm human. Here. Here's some money. What? Take a cab and have a hacky wait till you're safe in the lobby. You mean you're not even going to see me home? I've got work to do. I've plans to make. I have a feeling about this, John the Hermit. Now, I don't say that often, do I? But this time I've got a certain feeling. This is going to be big for me. It's going to be very big. <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, hey, hold it, Kip. I'm out of breath. Oh, it's just a little further, Mr. Camber. Oh, boy. You know, John likes the high ground. <laughs> he says it's closer to the sun. Yeah, and there's plenty of sun. It's 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. 6 a.m. Oh, time doesn't mean nothing to John. He's not like other people. Yeah, you can say that again. John didn't want to see you. I had to ask him as a favor to a friend. Are you friends? Well, I know you think he's crazy, and I guess he is, but please be careful what you say to him, huh? You are friends. It's not just the money with you, the way it is with your pal, Santis. Oh, well, Santis has got a father. He's got brothers. He doesn't like them, but he's got them. They're there. And you have? My mother. She works nights. You know, she isn't even home yet. Uh, well, I'll be careful of John's feelings. And here's your money in advance so you don't have to wait around. Now, let's go. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Candler. What? Uh, it's not like I'm selling John to you. Oh, I need the money, sure, but I'm doing him good, too. TV. <laughs> Boy, he, he could buy anything he wants with the money he'll get from you, right? Right. Well, then that ought to straighten him out. So I am doing him good. TV. Jeez. Someday I'll be on TV. Well, maybe later, Kip. Now, you leave when I give you the signal, right? Okay. Oh, there he is. Hey, John! John, uh, this is Mr. Candler. Well, you, you said I could bring him, remember? I remember, Kip. Hello, John. I'm John Hanson. Would you like to come inside, you and Kip? Oh, no, I, I got to get back and see my mother. But you don't have to worry about Mr. Candler, John. I spoke to him. Bye. Uh, Kip, Kip, uh... Were you going to invite me inside, John Hanson? Yes, I was. Here, uh, bend down. Oh, uh, yeah. What's the rock, sir? I uh, 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 see all the space in here. I live here in winter. Uh, sit down. <laughs> Have you uh, never sat down without a chair, Mr. Candler? Uh, not for a long time. I had a chair once. I had many things I didn't need. Have you ever read Henry David Thoreau? In school as a boy. Thoreau says that his material belongings took so much of his time when he was living at Walden Pond, trying to write and think, that he began to simplify life by eliminating things. Chairs, just things to dust, throw them out. Shelves, just things on which you put more things out. Thoreau learned to sleep on the floor. And after a while, his cabin was bare. But his mind and his head were crowded. But with none of these things, things to worry him, then he could work. Are you working like Thoreau? No. I'm living like Thoreau. Thoreau saved my life. You know how I came into this park? I think it was uh, five years ago. I came in to die. I hoped to starve to death. Why? Oh, you wouldn't understand. That was the way it had to be. I uh, thought so. But I had some books and things with me. And to take my mind off the hunger, I began to read. I found Thoreau. And then I began to see... I began to understand that material things were only things, nothing more. And I threw them out. I decided to live because of Thoreau. Uh, John, uh, do you think that what you have learned would help other people? Mm. My way is a hard way. They would not be interested. Well, who are you to judge that? What right have you to deprive them of their chance to hear it from your own lips? You know, Thoreau did say, he who eats the fruit should at least plant the seed. Yes, he said that. Then tell others what peace you found. I know how you can do it. Come with me. Come where? Out of the park. No, oh, never. I'd die. I wanted to die when I came in, and I would want to die if I left. 
There were other parks, bigger, even more beautiful. No, only this one. My sanctuary. No other place but this. You sound afraid. I am. I don't like people very much. I don't think Thoreau did either. He knew that they would lie and cheat and steal and hurt, so he ran away from them. No, I don't feel strong with people. They make me unhappy. I don't like to watch their mouths moving. Always talking. Did you know that the grass and the wind talk too? I hear them, but they have no mouths to move. No lies to tell. But, John, didn't Thoreau finally leave the woods and go back to his family? I have no family. You have a friend. Friend? <laughs> yes. The boy, Kip. He wants you to come out of the park with me. That's why he brought me to you. Kip wants me to... Yes. You could help him, John. I know a way for you to make a lot of money. And you could give it to him as a friend. Thoreau said, the most I can do for my friend is simply to be his friend. That's not enough for a boy whose mother works in a factory all night to buy food for them. No, it's not. Do you promise... I can come back to the park as soon as I begin to feel I want to die again. Long before that. It would help Kip if I talked to people the way you want me to. The way Kip wants you to. And you would help them, too. I'll go with you. For a little while. You promise it will be for a little while. Only a little while. For a little while. You have my promise. <laughs> It's me again. Add this to the other stuff. John Hanson was a GI, 57th Division, wounded at Changjun in Korea. Well, how do I know where? In the head, probably. His hometown is Hutchins Point, Kansas. Rush somebody out there for some bio, childhood, family stuff. I do it yesterday. We're running out of time. I don't know how long I can keep him happy. So far, only the bathtub does it. Now, I sent you a list of interviews I've lined up for after the show. And there's an introductory cocktail thing for the trade press. I'll call you back, Marty. Don't worry, John. It's just a friend with some clothes for you. It's only me, just a friend. I bought these, jacket and slacks. How are they? Uh, just right. Good girl. I want you to put these on, John. But I thought you were going to use the rags he came in for the show. I decided against it. If he cleans up the way I think he will. Ray, how much does he know? How much does he understand? Oh, what's the difference? I can handle him. What happens to him after you've gone as far as you can go with his gimmick? He'll be a rich hermit. I certainly don't intend to cheat him. Oh, certainly not. Okay. Oh. How will I look? Uh, don't change a button. You're beautiful. So are you. Hey, now, John, she's my girl. Watch out, she falls in love easily. The only remedy for love is to love more. Now you're talking. Is that the rope? Yes. Huh? I've been studying. Oh. Uh, which reminds me, John, that you have to learn a few lines. Uh, Ray, uh, I'm not sure I can do this. What? All those people and their mouths. Uh, I can talk to you because you're my friend. Can't I just talk to you and you tell them, John, you know that I'm your friend? Yes. Yes. You believe what I tell you? Yes. Then believe this. You are not afraid to starve to death in the park. You are not afraid to change your mind. You should not be afraid to share your new life with others. Nothing is so much to be feared as fear itself. A John who said that. Thoreau. Right. And fear always springs from ignorance. That was Emerson, Thoreau's friend. And he has not learned the lesson of life who does not every day surmount a fear. Emerson told Thoreau that, John Henson. Emerson told Thoreau. And what was good enough for Emerson and Thoreau should be good enough for you, right? Is he Hermit 1, Hermit 2, or Hermit 3? Ladies and gentlemen, our Truth Will Out celebrity panel, consisting of Celebrity 1, Celebrity 2, and Celebrity 3... We'll try 
in ten questions or less to get to the truth about which of these hermits is the real John Hansen, Hermit of the Park. Remember, the name of the game is The Truth Will Out. <laughs> now, Celebrity One wants to know... The first John Hansen, what kind of sandwiches do most people leave unfinished in the park? Egg salad. And I agree with them. <laughs> now, how do you make up for your lack of soap? I, uh, don't get very dirty. <laughs> Celebrities one and two want to know, can they pull your beard? Ow! <laughs> it's real, folks! It's really real! <laughs> Our panel has decided the first John Hansen is the real John Hansen. Will the real John Hansen please step forward? Bring on the prizes! Bring on the prizes! For you, Mr. Hansen, a combination freezer refrigerator with knife sharpening and gift wrapping attachments. Well, thank you, but uh, I don't need it. I can't use it. What was that? I have no electricity. Oh, yes, well, <laughs> we'll figure something out. You can always give it away. <laughs> Good. That's what I want to do. Oh, uh, to your mother, to your father, to your sweetheart? No, just to a friend. Oh, but we can't do that. Then you keep it. Now, let's get down to business, Mr. Hanson. And you could go into business with what we're going to give you. Oh, boy. A full living room suite of vibrating automatic massage furniture. A power lawnmower with a built-in TV screen. And an intercom for your car. A dual control intercom for your car. I have no car. I have no car, and I don't expect to get a car. I don't expect to clutter up my life with things. Don't you see that they're only things? I don't want them, and I won't take them. They're rotten, rotten. It, it's all rotten. Oh, please, folks, please. Hey, now, be careful. Don't throw things. Don't be angry at me. Hurry up, Charles. We've got to find him. Well, do you really think John will be in the park? He has no place else to go. I just hope he got back safely. Oh, I thought they were going to mob him back at the studio. That crowd was really crazy. Oh, I think he got away while they were fighting about the prizes. Uh, that's his hill where the cave is, but I don't see anybody. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Hey, Kip. Hey, Kip. Kip, what are you doing here? We're looking for John, Mr. Candler. So are we. We want to make sure he's safe. I feel awful bad. I'm sure sorry for you, Mr. Candler. Sorry for me? Yeah, after all you did. I'm sorry he acted that way, Mr. Candler. That crazy John. You put him in the money. Boy, I wish it would happen to me. What right did he have? What right to say the prizes were rotten? Who does he think he is? He's just an old bum, that's all. He had no right. He's waiting we catch up with him. What will you do, Santos? I'll show you what I'll do. What a lock. A rock? What are you going to do with it? I'll show you. I'll crack his crazy head wide open. What right? Come here. Come here. Santa's. Kip, come, Kip, come back. Santa's. Kip. Why did you bring me here, Ray? I... I needed someone with me. Not me. I won't hold your hand. You destroyed him. And that boy, Kip, his friend... Couldn't you see John was sincere, Ray? Can't you see sincerity anymore, crazy or not? That was a trouble. And Thoreau... Not more Thoreau. Haven't you done enough with Thoreau? No. I just remembered something else he wrote. I should have remembered it before. I was not born to be forced... I will breathe after my own fashion. If a plant cannot live according to its nature, it dies. And so a man.
Theater 5 has presented John Hanson, Hermit, written by Phyllis Cole and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Stan Watt, George Petrie, Fran Carlin, Evelyn Juster, Cecil Roy, and Gar Wood. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Theater 5 continues after late news.